This is part 17 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the concept of method chaining in jQuery, how method chaining works, and when will method chaining not work. Let's understand all these with an example. We'll be using this HTML in this demo. Notice we've got an unordered list, and at the moment, this list contains five list items. Now, we want to write some jQuery code, and that jQuery code should do the following it should change the color of all these list items to blue and we also want to do a couple of animations we want these list items to slide up first and then slide down so we want to do those two animations and finally we also want to set the title attribute of each of these list item to my title so let's see how to achieve this using jQuery code let's flip to Visual Studio so here we already have that unordered list that we have seen on the slide Within our jQuery ready function, we need a selector that's going to grab all these list item elements. So I'm going to use the jQuery element selector. So the element that we want to grab is li. So what is this selector going to do? This is going to return us a jQuery collection object back, and that collection object is going to contain all these list items. So what is the first thing that we want to do with those list items? We want to change their color to blue. So I'm going to make use of the CSS function. And this function has got two parameters. The first parameter is the name of the property that we want to change, which is color. And we want to set that to blue. So what happens when this piece of code is executed? Look at the CSS method. We are actually calling it on the jQuery collection object that is returned by the selector. So this method is going to implicitly iterate over each element within that collection and apply blue color. What is the next thing that we want to do? Animation. We want to slide up all these list item elements. Now, there are several animation functions in jQuery. We'll discuss all those functions in detail in a later video session. For now, to perform this slide up animation, I'm going to use slide up jQuery function. And this function has got three parameters. But for the purpose of this demo, we are only going to discuss the speed parameter. We specify the value for speed parameter in milliseconds. So 1,000 milliseconds is equal to one second. That means this animation, that is slide up animation, is going to last for one second. So the next thing we want to do is also an animation, but here we want to slide down the list items. So I'm going to use this jQuery slide down method. And if you look at this method, this also has got the same set of parameters as of slide up method. And again, here we are using um, 1000 milliseconds for speed, which means both of these animations are going to last for one second each. And the final thing that we want to do is set the title attribute. So dollar li and to set an attribute we can use attr function and if you look at this function it has got two parameters the name of the attribute that we want to set and the value so the name of the attribute is title and the value is going to be my title all right so let's save the changes and when we reload this page four things should happen first the color of these list items should change to blue Two animations should happen, slide up and slide down, each one second. And then finally, when we hover the mouse over any of the list item, the title attribute, you know, which we have set as my title, should show up as tooltip. So let's see if, if that happens. Look at that, we get the blue color, slide up, slide down. And when I hover the mouse over list item, look at that, we get the title attribute value as a tooltip. Now, if you look at this code, notice you know, how we are calling these functions .css, slide up, slide down, and attr. We are calling all these functions you know, on the same selector. So don't you think this code is redundant? You know, We have the same selector all over. Now, instead of writing this code like this, we can actually chain all these methods together, meaning you know, at the end here, so on the collection object that is returned by this selector, we're calling the CSS method. So at the end, I can put a dot and then call slide up method. Similarly, you know, we can then call slide down. And finally, we can call this attr function. 
and then an, a semicolon at the end. And we can get rid of all these lines. Look at this. Now we have achieved all this in a single line of code. Now when we save these changes and when we reload, the behavior should be the same. So how method chaining works? So what's going on here? This selector, what is this going to do? It's going to give us a jQuery object, which is a collection object. And that jQuery collection object contains all these list items. And on that object, we're calling the CSS method. What is this method going to do? It's going to implicitly iterate over each element within that collection, apply the blue color. And then once it has done with its job, it's going to return that object back. And whatever object this method is going to return, on that object, we're calling slide up method in turn. And what is this slide up method going to do? Again, it's going to do its job, meaning it's going to perform that animation on all those elements within that collection object and then return that collection object. And whatever object this method returns, on that we are calling slide down. So this process goes on until we reach this last method in this method chain. So that's how method chaining works. Now, when we have you know method chaining code like this, this line of code can very easily become quite long. And when it becomes too long, the readability of the code will be lost. So if you want to improve the readability of your code, you can actually introduce some white spaces and new line characters. So something like this. So I can actually move the CSS method down and then slide up method to the next line. Similarly, slide down and finally ATTR. So this version of the code with those extra white spaces and line breaks, you know, is much more readable than the previous version where we have all the chained methods in one line. Again, you know, when we reload, it should still work the same way, except that we have formatted it for readability. Now, let's discuss when will method chaining not work. So if you look at all these methods, they're actually doing their job and returning a jQuery object back. And whatever method, you know, whatever object is returned by CSS method on that object, slide up method operates, and it goes on until we reach the last method. Now, what's going to happen if we have a method in this chain which is not going to return a jQuery object? Then that method chain will not work. One such method is text method. So for example, when I use text method. So if you look at this text method, there are two things that we can do with this method. Um, if you use the method without the parameter value, this is actually going to return the text value of the list item. On the other hand, if you specify a value, something like x, y, z, then it's going to set that value to the list item. Okay. So let's use it without parameters. So when we use this text Para, uh, method without parameters, what is this going to do? It's actually going to return a single string back. And that string is going to contain the text of all these list items, you know, joined together. Let's actually look at that in action. So let's cut this code from here. And then let's wrap this in an alert function. Okay, so when we reload this page, Look at that. We get a single string back. And look at what the string contains. It contains all these country names. So what is this text method returning? It's not returning a jQuery object. It's simply returning a string back. And that string you know, contains all the country names. And then we have the CSS method slide up, slide down, and ATTR. So now, since this text method is not returning a jQuery object, this method chain is not going to work, meaning the color will not be changed to blue, no animations will be there, and the title attribute will not be set. Let's actually look at that in action. So let's save the changes, and let's reload this. Look at that. Nothing happens. When I hover the mouse over any of the list item, we don't get the title attribute value as a tooltip. And look at that, the color is not changed to blue, no animations, nothing. Why is that? Because this method is not returning a jQuery object back. You know, this method chain is not going to work. Now, we discussed that we can use this text method to set a value as well. So when we use this method to set a value, then this chain is going to work. Let's actually look at that in action. Let's actually set the value of the list item to my value. And let's save the changes. 
So when we reload the page, what should happen? It should change the text value of all these list items to my value. The color should be changed to blue. Animations should happen. And then the tooltip should be, I mean, title attribute value should be displayed as a tooltip. So let's reload the page. Look at that. When I have the mouse, we get my title as a tooltip. Okay, so when you use that text function to retrieve the value, since it's not returning a jQuery object, you know, the method chain will not work. Now, actually, let's look at another example. Now, what is going to happen when I move this text method down in the chain? So it's present right here. So that means this selector is going to give us a collection object, a jQuery object. On that, the CSS method should work, slide up should work, slide down should work. And this text method, since it's going to return a string back, you know, ATTR should not work. So except this, the rest of the methods in this chain should work. Let's actually look at that in action. So let's reload this page. Look at that blue color, slide up, slide down. But when I hover the mouse over, I don't get the attribute value as a tooltip. Okay? Only this method failed because the previous method in the chain is not returning a jQuery object back. Thank you for listening and have a great day.